Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for attending the last session of the conference. Now, we're going to be focusing on radio here. My name is Ken Rakowski. I'm from Los Angeles, California, and I have the distinction of being a talk show host. So I talk on radio in the States on both traditional radio, as we call it, terrestrial broadcast, as well as the internet or a podcast. So I have the opportunity to kind of go between both sides and understand what it's like. International audience heard around the world about 186,000 people a day online, which gives me the opportunity to kind of get a sense of what people are looking for in that digital spectrum. So today we're going to talk about the whole concept of where radio is, where it was, and where it's going to go. We have a great panel, which we'll have an opportunity to talk also. And I'm just going to do some talking points. And uh, I, I wanted to start real quick, I thought this was kind of fun, a little picture of different radios all, along, all over the place from the very, very first radio to the first AM radio FM transmitter to see where things are, not sure what you have. I have all these different gadgets, we all have iPods, iPods are very popular. Then we now have cell phones that have the ability to turn into full-blown radio. This is a new Nokia N95 released recently that has full radio built inside it, full podcasting, and it's one of the more impressive phones that are out there that allow radio to come right to your hand. Another device, which are these new tablet PCs, this is another Nokia product called the N800, allow you to stream radio cont uh, content as well as podcast anywhere you're at. So let me just dive into a couple of things regarding radio. There's an interesting debate that's been going on at this event regarding old media and new media. So if we ask an old media company a question, it's a very simple question, what is your product? They almost always answer it the same way. They say, well, it's our content, it's our TV shows, it's our newspaper articles, radio shows, magazine articles, it's our content. But if you go ask a new media company, like a, a Google, the same question, what is your product? They answered a little differently. They would say our product is our viewers, our surfers, our listeners, our readers. Because if you think about a product, the product, if it is the viewer, who's the customer? The customer is the advertiser. The advertiser, wait, the customer is the advertiser. Meaning the advertiser wants, not the content, the advertiser wants the reader. They want the web surfer, they want the listener. New media companies get it, they're there. So when we all started the dot com days, we thought about these things called the four C's. They're very, very prominent. Content, community, communication, commerce. And successful web companies understood this. Yahoo, Amazon, eBay, they had the content. For example, Amazon's content was the books, the write-ups. They had the community, the people around those books or CDs. The communication were the reviews, people saying I like this, and then the commerce, people buying the products. They got it, eBay does it quite well also. Things have changed a little. Now we look at this concept called the four M's. And the four M's takes the same concept as the four C's, but we wrap it a little differently. We go with movement, management, monetization, and measurement. Let me explain this. And this all fits into radio, I'm gonna get there. So we move someone, somewhere. How do we do that? Well, we could do it with a banner ad, we could do it through a radio commercial, a TV commercial. And once you get them there to that website, that location, you manage them. You get them to read this, listen to this, click here, fill that out, and then you monetize it. You might have a banner ad, you might have a subscription, and then you measure it. And measurement's the key. Companies that are doing this really well, like in the States, Comcast, which is a giant cable company, Apple does this very, very well with iTunes, and Google, the king at using the four M's. So let's talk about radio. What does radio touch? I have some U US statistics on radio right now. It's, it is one of the larger audiences out there. Radio reaches 96% of the US population. Now, if we look at radio, things are changing a little. People are getting older. And as they get older, they don't listen to radio. Younger people don't tend to listen to radio. But where I'm from, being Los Angeles, we spend a lot of time in our car. <laughs> And the car rules when it comes to radio. Most time spent listening to radio is in the car. So radio, right now, still home in the whole form of transportation. So what's being listened to? It's interesting, if we look at the statistics, 
This is where people are listening to, or what kind of content they're listening on radio. You can see from religious going all the way up to news and talk, country, hits radio, NPR, which we'll touch on a little later on. Now, right now there's a decline, and where the decline is, it's around rock, classic rock, and hits radio. But there's an increase, and the increase is all around urban and religious. This is where the opportunities are growing, and also foreign languages. Satellite radio, interesting competition right now. We have two prominent players here in the United States, or in the United States, we have XM and we have Sirius. Combined, they have about 14 million users, 14 and a half million combined, drop in the bucket compared to traditional radio. But if you look at radio worldwide, the footprint on satellite radio by the end of next year, almost the entire world will have access to satellite radio. Entire world. So all of a sudden, traditional terrestrial radio is really starting to feel the pain. Let's look at another, another area of interest in competition, podcasting, which is really hot right now. You get an idea, again, U.S. statistics, approximately 32 million people listening to podcasting. It's on the increase. We also have about 67 million web radio listeners, and there's some aspects there you see like iTunes, uh, Pandora, which is an interesting concept, Slack Radio, and NPR. So radio is going through an interesting move. It's not just on a box. Now it's on a device. It's through the Internet. And when we think about radio, I think you might want to look beyond the idea. And the last point I want to show is the idea of creating niche radio. Radio made for groups. I like this aspect of something called B2B radio, which stands for business to business radio. So you actually create a show for a unique audience in an enterprise area, for example. Imagine if Samsung would create a radio show just for Samsung employees or LG employees, just internal. No one external will ever hear the show except internal. And it would look something like this. This is the idea of a B2B radio environment. It would be captured by devices internally. So by the way, this is actually a Microsoft B2B show. This is something that they're working on internally. So you see how it would actually utilize internal devices that all Microsoft employees would listen to it on their Zoom or on their laptop, mobile device, or computer. There would be areas to where they could have communication, show archives, websites. There would be RSS feeds, text message, message uh, messaging, email, and of course, statistical information. By the way, the four M's are in there, movement, management, monetization, and measurement, all inside that area. So think beyond radio. We're going to talk a little deeper into radio, where it is and where it's going. Our panel is from all over the place. Our next speaker is Jake. Are you going to come up and flip computers real quick? So we'll do that. Thank you very much. Let's just flip this. You're up here.